and welcome to my channel be yourself this is dr rani sharma and i'm here with the second part of the plasma membrane in my first part i have explained just the general features of the plasma membrane why it is semi solid in nature why it, uh, what is about the lipid rafts and all in this video i'm going to explain about the selectivity of the plasma membrane why it only allow the passage of only particular molecule while other uh, get repelled or at other don't get passed into the plasma membrane so let's begin uh, transportation across the plasma membrane plasma membrane maintain a specific composition of cytoplasm with the help of a specific transport proteins like carrier proteins and channel proteins it is already known to you uh here there are different types of transportation so for i uh, one is a transportation which uh, passes uh, uh, across the plasma membrane along with the uh, along with the uh, concentration gradient from the higher concentration to the lower concentration such types of uh, transportation is termed as passive diffusion what happen in this some molecules like gases which include carbon dioxide oxygen some hydrophobic molecules like benzene and small polar molecules like water get easily passed through the plasma membrane without the assistance of any other force or any other requirement while on the other hand some large molecules and charged molecules like glucose amino acid chlor uh, chlorine and sodium ion can't pass across the plasma membrane it needs some uh, some special type of resistance or energy for the passage of from the outer medium to the inner medium across the plasma membrane such type of uh, uh, of transportation which requires some external source is known as facilitated diffusion here uh, you can see the outer cells inner cells suppose a uh, there are some carrier proteins which facilitate the transportation of certain molecules what happens when a molecule binds to the carrier proteins it leads to conformational change into this carrier protein it will uh, change its configuration in such a way that the molecules which need to be transported across the plasma membrane can easily pass the plasma membrane another type of protein or the facilitated types of transportation is the channel protein what happen in ch ion channels there are two uh, two types and it has certain properties which is very central to their functions like uh, it is very rapid in nature highly selective and not permanently open and i have told that two types of channels one is the ligand gated ion channels and other is the voltage gated ion channels to understand its central functions i have taken your example of uh, um, of squid axon here you can uh, able to see the sodium ion channel and there is a uh, potassium ion channel this uh, channel form has been uh, has been uh, we have taken it from the squid axon through the process of patch clamp technique in which we use a micro pipette to uh, to pinch out only a portion of the plasma membrane carrying such types of channels now uh, what happened at the resting positions when the both sodium ion channel and potassium channel are in the close position the resting potential of the membrane is minus 60 mg uh, volt here i have used the term ion channel and uh, i have represented light blue color as uh, sodium and uh, dark blue color as for the for the potassium ions there were two types of ion channels i uh, voltage gated and ligand gated this is a voltage gated type of example because here you will see when the sodium ion channel will open the sodium ion sodium ion will be imported inside the cell and this will leads to the change in the potential difference across the plasma membrane to from minus 60 mega volt to plus 30 mega volt now what happen to neutralize this this time potassium ion channel will open and potassium ion will be exported outside the cells now this time the plasma membrane get hyperpolarized which is minus 75 mega volt after some time it against 
back it uh, to its resting potential which is minus 60 mega volt this is how this potential difference across the plasma membrane leads to the opening and closing of the channels and what was the property of the ion channel it doesn't open for the long time it remains it will uh, open when only when there is a requirement uh, i have explained one of the property of that and it's also rapid too now what about the ligand gated ion channels it is similar to that of the uh, voltage gated only the difference is that there was a voltage difference across the protein plasma membrane which was initiating the opening and closing of the channels but here after the binding of ligand this uh, uh, channel will open uh, sorry this channel will open and then the potassium ion will be imported inside the uh, pump uh, if you will remember the synaptic nodes there was acetylcholine which after which leads uh, to the opening and closing of the sodium channel it is the best example of the ligand gated ion channel uh, one more thing i have discussed in my last videos of the plasma membrane that plasma membrane is uh, selective in nature then how this specificity comes uh, i am explaining only with the example of two channels one is a sodium channel another is a potassium channel sodium ion is very small it is 0.95 armstrong and it is very small in comparison to the potassium ion which is 1.33 armstrong so it's very definite that it will only allow the passage of a sodium channel but it will repel the potassium ion it will not be able to pass across the channel but what about the potassium channel it is uh, it if it is allowing the process of potassium channel which is completely uh, larger in comparison to sodium ion then it must also lead to the process of sodium ion but it is not so why here you are seeing the yellow color balls it is a, uh, have represented this uh, as a carbonyl oxygen what happened when potassium ion comes and interact with this carbonyl ion this potassium ion get detached from the head to from the water and get easily passed through the channel but it is not so with the sodium ion when uh, it, because of its smaller size it unable to interact with the carbonyl oxygen and it doesn't able to pass across the potassium channel all this i have explained here was the passive transportation where ATP is was not required but sometimes for the transportation ATP is required when there is a requirement of the of any ion or any particular molecules against their against their concentration what happened in this uh, it uh, first of all during this process first sodium uh, binds to to the uh, channel this uh, leads to the activation of the ATP and it gets phosphorylated. After the phosphorylation of the channel, uh, it will lead to change the configuration. After changing configuration, sodium ion is pumped out and after that, potassium ion will bind to the channel. After the binding of potassium channel, you have looked that the channel has again dephosphorylated. Uh, After the dephosphorylation, it will again back to its position and potassium ion will be imported inside. This is how sodium and potassium ion channel get pumped, uh, pumped out sodium ion and pumped in potassium ion with the help of active transportation. Apart from this, there are certain other factors which leads to the uh, liberation of the energy and it provides a sufficient amount of energy so that some molecules get imported or exported inside or outside the cell uh, uh, against their concentration. For example, I have represented this uh, hexagonal as a glucose and, uh, and this small ball as a sodium. What happened uh, for the transportation of uh, glucose against the concentration gets here you are looking that they have high concentration of glucose even that there uh, there will be the transportation of glucose from outside cell to inside it is generally uh, present in, uh, in the small intestine uh, where there is absorption of the food molecules what happens first of all sodium ion will binds to the to its uh, uh, specific binding site on a channel 
and this binding will liberate certain energy which provide the binding of uh, glucose molecules to the channel and this leads to the conformational changes of the channel and in, so, in such way uh, glucose is transported against the concentration while here you are looking that sodium is towards the concentration. This is how this active transportation is uh, 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 regulated uh, even though there is absence of ATP. This type of transportation where sodium as well as glucose is uh, transported towards the same side of the plasma membrane is called symport. When it will be against it, then it will be known as antiport. This much was in my this video in the function of the plasma membrane about the selectivity, about the active and passive transport. There are many more uh, topics uh, for you uh, with me and if you want that all topic get uh, updated regularly then don't forget to subscribe and share my channel till then goodbye and have a nice day be yourself.